This is Don't Panic, episode number 172, recorded August 14th, 2017, Surface Tension. Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the show we certify to be 100% Nazi free, our commitment to you the customer. I'm Sean Jennings, joined as always by my one and only co-host, the man who's been here since day one and is truly committed to this program and, and, and your enjoyment of it, Mr. Colby Rabideau. It's true. Um, I can I can also confirm that we're 100% Nazi free. Is that what you said? Nazi free? <laughs> <laughs> I said I said Nazi full. We're full of. Oh, Nazis. No. oh Whoops. no! You gotta listen, oh, Colby. No. Big difference. No. Big difference. Although I do feel <laughs> I, duped. I do feel like and and no slight to us, but I feel like seeing you, me, and Dan together, like it's not the great. You know, we're not the most diverse group, but I think we're diverse in spirit. Well, I mean, there are there are, there are other there are other ways you can be diverse, right? Like we just have to be creative about yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, we're all you know we're well, we're all white and we're all straight guys and we're all well educated. <laughs> You've got of. long hair though, so <laughs> that's true. This is a very slippery um, slope. We should we should jump off this bobsled before it careens into a cliff. Indeed, indeed. How's it going, Colby? Uh, it's good. I'm in a new apartment. That's slick. You got a lot of fridge magnets. Uh, Look at that. Yeah, it's it's actually now funny story. This it's actually the exact same number of fridge magnets I had before. <laughs> I think it's just so so much more in your face. You know, are you gonna spell yeah, out well, like secret messages behind you? Maybe. I I didn't think I was I was in a rush tonight, um. So I didn't think of that. But in the future, maybe I will. You have to keep an eye out. Uh. I'm trying to think of what else happened. So last week I was on the show. I, oh yeah, I was I was hunting those weird bugs. It turned out the bugs were silverfish. Oh, terrible. Uh, which I I had no idea. Um, I had never seen them in real life before. Uh, and they, I guess they weren't that gross. It was just weird to see like bugs that I was unfamiliar with craw- crawling up the wall in Rhode Island. And I didn't know that they were, like, a problem bug that they, like, infest your house. Yeah, when I was in Houston, a lot of the homeowners I knew, it was like saying your house was infested with rats or termites or something. I mean, they were just as just as bad. I was like, oh, my God, so, you know, you, you got to do all kinds of, you know, bug bombs and all kinds of crazy shit to get rid of them. Uh, they're very, mm. they're, 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 you know, they're not like a... Like a little spider or something. I mean, they're they're, they're serious business yeah. if you have an infestation. Oh, they, they were pretty big. One of them was clearly was it. So I looked them up on Wikipedia after. Uh, one of them was a baby, which they aren't silver yet. They're kind of translucent. That was the first one I saw. And then there was like a whole a whole grown one. Oh my god, it was weird. But apparently, well, at least according to Wikipedia, they uh eat like glue and stuff so so they get in like wallpaper and like eat the glue the adhesive uh which is weird but i assume that's why they infest people's houses because they eat glue yeah Um, i had a colleague who um who moved into a house in houston and they found them and the very first thing he did was he had a not like a super expensive fancy one but he had an antique book collection and they'll eat the glue right out of the books that's one of the first things they'll destroy um, in a home, and so immediately he had to take and, and store his books elsewhere. Um, mm. Oh, gross! That'd be such. That'd be so. That'd be a huge surprise if you opened a book and <laughs> Just they're not bugs. like. Yeah, they're not the creepiest bugs in the world. Like, uh, oh my god! Two nights ago, first first fucking house centipede in in the new apartment. Oh boy! Uh, Welcome. Which is unfortunate. You. Yeah. I know it came out of the shower drain too, because it came out of the shower, uh, which mm, makes me freak out a little time, a little bit every time, every time I go near the. Sh- it, well, when when I go into the shower, because like, I don't think there there is anything worse than there there could be anything worse than like getting in the shower and then having one of those those little assholes like come out of the drain at you. But I I feel like. Literally anything happening to you in a shower is worse than it happening anywhere else. Like, <laughs> like where are you more vulnerable than when you're I mean, in the shower? Like, when you're on the toilet, I guess. Like, or, I disagree. I think you're more mm. vulnerable. At least you have some clothes on when <laughs> so, you're on so a do toilet. You, 
do you think the scene in Jurassic Park where where the guy gets eat, get gets eaten by the by the giant dinosaur would have been more effective if he had been in the shower instead of honestly? On the toilet? I think it would have been more effective if I had ever seen Jurassic Park, but have you you you've never seen Jurassic Park? No, no, I haven't. No, I, I haven't what? gotten around to it. It's so you know, it's hard to find Colby. They don't, you know, it's kind of a lost <laughs> lost gem. No one's ever oh heard of it. God. You know, we wrote cult classic. Jurassic Park was one of the movies that my parents recorded for us, um, like off illegally off of TV, as 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 one did in the nineties. Um, and my sister and I, I remember. We were probably like a little too young to actually be watching it. And that was evident in the fact that we would get to the first part where the T-Rex came out and we would stop watching. And for years, we had only seen the movie up to that part because we were never like not we were never uh, not too scared to to get through it. Mm -hmm. It was brutal. Brutal stuff. The good old days. Yeah. Uh. I didn't open any of the links tonight. Oh, boy. It's it's not the strongest week for news. You know, the problem is we're kind of between... Once we hit September 1st, we're going to start rolling into that fall announcement pre-Christmas. A lot of phones, a lot of Apple, Microsoft, video games. It's, it's going to be... It's going to be... All the new video games are going to be released. It's We're going to have a lot more news moving into the fall. Um, it's kind of that quiet, back-to-school-ish yeah. sort, of, sort of time... Should we talk about internet acronyms instead? We can try. The problem is, I gotta see if I can find a list. So, so uh, it just in some um, acron. Oh, I don't even know how to spell acronyms. What was, did, what was the one you mentioned before the show? SMH. SMH. I so I see that I see that on Twitter all the time, and okay. So anyway, let, I'll back up for a second here. So Colby and I were talking before the show, and I brought up the fact that. I feel old and out of date because it used to be like BRB and, you know, TTYL mm-hmm. and like, you know. The, the I know what of, all those mean. I work at OMG, you know, so I, I get it. <laughs> and, and I used to know all those. I used to be kind of up with it. But now I'm seeing ones online that I don't I don't know what they mean anymore. Like they're they're kind of new. Um, And so I thought it might be helpful to maybe go through and find out what the latest of internet slang is. So SMH, you have, I did look it up. Do you have any guesses as what SMH stands for? And I see this one a lot. It might just be who I follow. Sounds mighty hard. Like when you're talking about a difficult problem, SMH sounds mighty hard. That's pretty good. My first thought was um, so much hate. Oh, so that sounds, that sounds like, Something that would come up a lot on Twitter more than more than sounds mighty hard. Uh, the actual answer is uh, shaking my head. Urban Dictionary says oh. it's used when someone finds something so stupid no words can do it justice. <laughs> okay, I like that. I'm actually going to use that. It's pretty um, good. See, I the ones I have trouble with and find I encounter most often are like the work related ones, where like in emails or like uh, in Slack people use them talking about work things uh and they are i don't know what they are like there's one i still i always forget this one it's like f there's an f and w's like f w i w w or something oh for what it's worth oh that's that's it (laughs) is that is that what did did i get it is it maybe it is i think it might be i know there's a common acronym for what it's for for what it's worth yeah. No, I think I think you're right about that. The other one I like is uh so people do there's IMO which is in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh and then people say I am HO in my humble opinion. Um but I like I am HO because anyone who puts that before what they're about to say is not being humble at all. It's just like they 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 like I guess are aware that they're being a jerk possibly. Um and feel the need to add one character in the hopes that that will make them less of a jerk. But I don't think it ever does. I agree. Yeah. I have seen a YMMV. I've never seen that before. Your mileage may vary, (laughs) which which was kind of overkill, but okay. Okay. Yeah. Huh? 
I feel like there's one more that I that I never know when it comes up. But oh boy, okay. Here's a CNN article: 28 internet acronyms every parent should know. <laughs> oh boy, this is gonna be <gasps> fair. Uh, all right, here we. <laughs> oh boy, this is gonna be great. All right, I so so Colby, imagine you're a parent with a with a teen. Okay. Uh-huh. This is what CNN thinks you need to know about the acronyms your teeth. So if you see any of these, be aware. G-N-O-C. Uh, good night. I don't know. <laughs> How about get naked on camera? Oh. <laughs> okay. How about, I mean, I guess. How about T-H-O-T? <laughs> That's hot. Just H O T that T H O T that's hot. That's pretty good. That's a, that's a legit guess. No, Colby, it's that hoe over there. <laughs> okay. Uh, Let's see here. How about uh, P R O N? P R O N. Yes, not like shrimp, not prawn. The other prawn. P R O N. Please read on, I don't know. Spoiler alert, it's a trick question. It's not an acronym. It's actually just a re-scrambled porn. <laughs> oh, it's like, it's like the, uh, what's the, what's the, the word people do that with? Um, te, like T-E-H instead of the. Uh... Yep. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go download some prawn. <laughs> Let's see. That's weird. Sean, did you did you get to have a conversation about, with your parents about what Netflix and chill was a euphemism for? <laughs> no, I had to explain. Yeah, I had to explain to my parents what Netflix yeah, and chill yeah. was. Yes, yes, right. I did. Yes, I think everyone got to have that that conversation. Yep, um, which is really really magical. I think that's a that's a <laughs> standout. Yep. No, I think sometimes when these words and phrases get into too popular of culture, <laughs> it's like, no, nah, the parents right. ruined it. And it's like, I guess it must have happened too fast or something where, like, they didn't. I don't know. I don't know. Just delightful, though. Well, I'll leave you with one more acronym off of CNN's list IWSN. Uh, oh, some, something is playing a video. Stop. Uh, IWSN. Uh, I watch sports news. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one better. No, no, you're close though. You're so close. No, it's I want sex now. Oh, there you go. So right. if, if you see your teens texting these things around, okay. There you I, go. I, I mean, I guess I. I want I, sports. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if 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 that applied to me right now and I succeeded. And, and that resulted in me having a teen. It's going to be a while, so I feel like these might not be relevant. I, I can just imagine, Colby, like you on like Tinder or something, and, you, and, you're, and you're messaging girl, and you're using these acronyms, but you don't be like, what you up to right now? And it's I, IWSN, and they're like, whoa, this guy. It's like, no, I'm just watching Sports Center. Wow, you're a dirty mind. Oh, dear. Uh, all right. That was, that was quite an experience. This is what happens when Dan doesn't keep us on task. I know. Crazy shit uh, happens. I came up with a new acronym before the show because Sean and I didn't know that Dan wasn't coming. Mm. Uh, and I said that I didn't know that Dan was AFDP. And what I meant by that was away from Don't Panic. Which is where you, you really never want to be there. That's a That's a bad place. Don't go to the bad place. Nope. But alas, he did. And we will continue on in his absence, in his honor. And we do have some news. Uh, it's it's not a completely empty week. It's a light week. But there's some fun stories in here, which I'm kind of excited about. Um, before we get to that, and Colby can look through a few of these while I tell people that we're live right now on Facebook at facebook.com slash don't panic show. We're live there Monday nights, roughly 10, 15, 10, 30 ish. Uh, but if you just go and like the page, it tells you, you know, we show up in your feed when we're live. 
Uh, and if you're watching live, of course, you can comment. We'll be watching the, the page all night. And, of course, you can call in the phone number uh, 508-644-TECH. That's 508-644-8324. Now, Colby, where would you like to begin in this fantastic rundown of the news? All right. Uh... Uh, would, you like me, would you like me to jump in here, buddy? Yeah, yeah, help me out. Okay. I, w- I was like midway through my pick, and then I realized I hadn't really looked at the links. Wow. I, and I gave you all uh, that yeah. time. I gave you so oh, much no. lead. Um, all right. That's perfectly fine. I think I want to talk about the, the what I would consider the weirdest story in the rundown, which is this Amazon food story. Okay. And it, it's really kind of mostly just a rumor, but it's bizarre. So Amazon... Uh, we've talked about it on the show previously, maybe launching a, a, a meal service. But, Colby, the problem with food is, I just got a HelloFresh box today. The problem with the food is you have to keep it cold or it spoils, mm-hmm. right? It's a, it's a problem. Food <laughs> has bacteria true. on it. But what if I told you it was possible to make food that didn't go bad? What? Exactly. Like, 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 like everything is just peanut butter or something? No, better. Amazon is looking to partner with a company using a technology first developed for the military to produce (laughs) tasty prepared meals that do not require refrigeration. It's a technology called, see if this sounds good, microwave-assisted thermal sterilization. It was developed (laughs) by researchers at Washington State University and now is is being brought to market by a startup called 915 Labs. The way it works is... um, Oh shoot! I was looking at the wrong part of the article. <laughs> Have you seen the? Did you see? Did you watch the video with the pictures of this food? I know it's disturbing. It looks like a microwave, like quiche. Mm-hmm. Like if you, if that were a thing that exists, which dear God, I hope it's not. But if there was like you went to the grocery store and bought a frozen pre-made quiche and then microwaved it. I think that's what it would be. And, and what's crazy is that meal started out as chicken Parmesan. So I, they might, <laughs> I think they have a real, pr- no, that's not true. Uh, <laughs> no, the way it works is that they take the food, they seal it. Then they, they boil it in highly pressured water, then bombard it with microwaves. And the way it works is it, they believe it can then sit on, on uh, for up to a year on the shelf without refrigeration. Now, this is a totally... That chicken parmesan, you could put it in this thing and you would not have to refrigerate it for... It could just sit there for a year. The, the regular meal. And they believe this technology will enable the meal to taste just as good as before you microwave-assisted thermal sterilized it. So did this, like... Does this... Like, this is applicable to any food? theoretically yes. like like i could take the leftover pizza in my fridge and like microwave thermal assist it and and boom it'll uh, last forever Col- colby i am absolutely certain the machine to do this is not only bigger than your apartment but probably <laughs> twice as large so this is not something you'll be doing at home in fact they've never done it at scale they've only ever tested the technology frankly and this is true the fda has technically not approved it so <laughs> that was my next that was my next question like it does it not go bad because the food is like irradiated it's, it's so bacteria can't grow because it's it's radioactive that that's what i think that's i mean is they it, you know they don't spell out the secret sauce of how it works but basically yeah that's what it is it's crazy yeah so so really oh. colby the ultimate question here if Amazon came out with Amazon prepared meals and they said, Colby, good news, we've got we've got a chicken quesadilla and you can buy it and we'll <laughs> ship it to you with two day prime and a regular box and it just shows up and you can eat it now, you can eat it in a month or six months, whenever you get around to it. And you just put it in the in the in the oven or the microwave, you heat it up and you eat it. Would you would you do it? I mean, I would I would take the Amazon uh microwaved food challenge i think i don't know if i would like buy it in bulk and plan to eat it for the duration but um i mean i guess you know depending on how close we seem to like nuclear war or whatever maybe that'd be a that'd be a reasonable plan it's hard to say 
uh, yeah, I would be up for that challenge. I would, I would try it once. Okay, uh, and I will let you try it once. <laughs> I have no interest in being anywhere near this. Uh, I think actually, uh, maybe maybe my offer of my my offer of trying it once is like pending FDA approval. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good disclaimer to have on your approval. Be like, no, yeah. as long as they know it's safe, then yeah, I'm happy to try it. Right, right. right. As long as they're reasonably they're certain it won't kill me. Just reasonably certain. Like, I don't want to eat it and die immediately. Like, I would, I'm, I would be more willing to risk like long term side effects <laughs> <laughs> than I would what, immediate side effects. What happened to Colby? He ate too many of those microwaved meals. <laughs> he didn't make it. His arm fell right off. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so who knows? Hey, look, Amazon is supposedly exploring it. Who knows if anything will ever come of it? But um, I thought this was such a weird, bizarre story that I'm like, this seems like the kind of thing Amazon would totally do just because they could. So look, look, <laughs> yeah, look forward to that coming soon to a to a shelf near you. Cool. All right. What else do we have here? Uh. I feel like if Dan were here, he would want to talk about SoundCloud. Dan likes SoundCloud, right? Dan does like SoundCloud, and I love SoundCloud. I, I we oh, got we you? got we got two shows hosted on SoundCloud. We're up for debate and game oh, nights are yeah. both hosted there. Thank I God. actually give. I'm like one of five people who actually give SoundCloud money. So really, I think they owe me something. Um, we talked about on the show previously. SoundCloud. Uh, turns out when you don't have any money, it's hard to run a business. As SoundCloud has experienced good news because uh, this week. They have announced a round of investment totaling uh, just shy of $170 million, the largest financing round in the history of the company. Along with that money, they've decided to kick to the curb their current CEO, uh, Alex uh, Leung, and bring in former Vimeo head, uh, Kerry Trainer, uh, with a new COO as well. Um, Trainer tells Billboard Magazine, which it, I cannot believe that's still a magazine, uh, that he will endeavor to pay greater attention to the creators, which include developing a robust creative toolkit for SoundCloud's unlimited service in hopes of attracting more musicians to pay for its upper tier subscription. Mm. Is that what what you use for for the, the other podcasts? Yes. The problem is if you're uploading stuff like an hour in length, uh, SoundCloud gets really funky and we'd run mm. up against they have limits. I so see. um it's not we can't, we can't put don't don't panic on there or or no. you're saying you have that problem in general no i no, you could if you what well, i'm saying the free version you couldn't oh i see yeah so the the stuff the shows are just a little too large and then like rss they do a bunch of limiting stuff if you don't pay them which what hey they're a business i'm not you know i'm not gonna fault them um Great. it's just we actually get a lot of listens from within soundcloud too which is good so yeah. Um, That's cool. I've been mildly happy, but I will say I have been a paying SoundCloud user for two, three years, and the service has not changed one bit in that they have not added a feature, they mm. have not upgraded a tool, they ha it has been e exactly the same. What have they... I mean, I, I know they've been sort of in trouble for a while, right? But like... They haven't done anything in well, years. The, well, what, but it what was they've been doing. The the last big push they did was to launch a Pandora, Spotify, whatever type Apple Music type service where you pay them to listen to actual songs by famous artists, which unsurprisingly didn't work because there was a ton of competition. So, um, they they really sort of began to shy away from the sort of casual audio creators like you or I um, right. to focus on right. big artists because they actually make money for them. So, mm. And that really did not did not go well for them. Darn. Well, at least they, they live to live to fight another day, I guess. I, I mean, I, I hope they I hope they succeed. I hope they do well, not just because, you know, we're we're on there, but also because, you know, I do think there's value in having a place for, you know, in the same way YouTube is really valuable to us as a society as a place to put video, there, there really mm -hmm. is no YouTube for audio. Uh, and I, I think SoundCloud has a, really kind of is that, but I think they have a good opportunity to sort of own the space. Again, the problem is how do you, how do you make money doing it? Took YouTube right. a long time to figure that out. Right. So. I guess they could put ads on it. The classic. Well, you know, honestly, I mean, 
if you think about it, if SoundCloud had really gotten in on the ground floor of podcasting, mm. I mean, they really could have cleaned house. Because really, even today, yeah. there's anchors taken off like crazy, but there's really no one go-to way of like, I want to do a podcast, and I know nothing about RSS or hosting right. or any of this. Do it for me. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, it's a huge pain in the butt, too, as a person who has built multiple podcasts. <laughs> for the same podcast, uh, mind you. <laughs> for the same podcast, we just did it twice. Uh, especially, like, it's not a hard thing, like, to do the RSS feed, but it's it's tedious. Like, there's a bunch of different, uh, like, formats, and, like, there are special tags you have to put in just for iTunes, and, like... If you don't do the iTunes ones, you're really screwed because that's where, like, everybody – like, even the non-iTunes podcast apps all, like, look to iTunes to get the information. So it's, like, everything gets weird. Um, like, I think you're right. Like, they could have done it. And they already have, like, the hard part, which is, like, the, the audio hosting infrastructure. And, like and the audio stuff is pretty cool good, all things considered. Like, it's not hard to upload stuff. It's not hard to embed stuff. The RSS mm. feed works pretty well. I've never had any major issues. The All they would have to do is build out the ability for me as a creator to build a front page yeah, to host the show. Right. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not really that much more. Maybe the ability to bring in, not video hosted there, but attach a video. I mean, you could add in a few of these little side features, you know, but I, yeah. don't, I don't think they would have to do much, frankly. The problem is, again, how do you make money doing that? Right, right. You know, the the vast majority of podcasts don't make money, so it's it's awfully difficult to to try and extract some some value out of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I checked our our Amazon referrals last month, and you know, we're not making any money off of this show. I can assure you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so um, the the I should probably ask you this after, but I'll ask you this right now. Uh, when I've been putting up the episodes, I haven't been like doing anything to the Amazon links that we put in for our picks and things. Should I? Should I, I have been? I autom I do those. I take them and oh. update them in the sheet. So the ones in the sheet are automatically. All right. Yeah, I've gotten Good. in the habit of because I used to forget when I was when I was uploading them. I would forget too. Yeah. So now I just got in the habit. So you're okay. I mean, I could also make it so the website does that for us, but not, we, can, no. we can talk about that later. We'll keep it simple. Uh, no, 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 not a problem. And, and yes, everyone should go out and check out our picks and then click the link and then buy them and then give us your, you know, 30 cents yeah. or whatever we would get. <laughs> right. And someday we might even be able to have enough, have enough 30 cents accrued to be able to withdraw that from, from the Amazon. Yep. That's right. Someday we'll be, we'll be rich off our referrals. Um, <laughs> I think we need, frankly, I just think we need a sponsor. I think so. Too. And I think I think we'd be, you know, I mean, Casper won't throw us some money. Blue Apron. <laughs> I mean, these guys, they sponsor fucking everybody. I think one of us, you know, uh, I blame Dan, actually, because he's the most the one who most recently switched jobs. But one of us should should just get a job at one of the companies that sponsors podcasts, uh, you know, like like, yeah, Blue Apron, Casper, uh, yeah, Warby Parker. Oh, uh, I, I don't know. You know the ones that that you hear. Constantly. I've gotten in the habit of skipping the ads. That's really the problem. I'm terrible. Mm, yeah, they're not getting their message across. But I already own a Casper, so mm. I got suckered. I I bought it after listening to a podcast. So I got I got the uh, the the Lisa one because that mm. was this sweet, sweet home. Yeah, how do you name. like that? Is that new? When did you get that? Well, I got it because my other my old bed was too big and also really old and crappy IKEA bed. Um, so I, I mean, I've had it for like a week now, I guess. Oh, and how's that going for you? It's fine. It's better than the air mattress I was sleeping on before. So, well, they say it takes like a a month plus to get used to. Was your old one foam or was it? It was foam. Yeah. Okay, so then it's not too bad. Yeah, it is different. Like it's not not the same, but I think I like it. I don't know. I don't have a bed frame right now, so it's just like a mattress on the floor. It's the. I don't know. My life is in shambles. Ah! Buy Elisa. Use offer yeah. code. Don't <laughs> um, uh, that's not a real offer code. Damn them. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? So we've talked about SoundCloud. What's next? Mm. Leaks Microsoft memo reveals high Surface Book return rates. Oh boy, this is a, this is exactly the kind of riveting news we like to cover here on the show. No, I don't. No, this is interesting. So this actually started uh, much earlier in the week and kind of has progressed. It started when Consumer Reports, uh, which if you're not familiar, is the magazine that essentially just rates everything and just tells you how good stuff is. It's kind of like the the, the print version of the wire cutter, right? Um, mm-hmm. They came out and said we can no longer recommend the Surface because they break a lot. They surveyed 9,000 owners and found roughly 25% of them had incurred issues. By the end of the second year of ownership, they said, this means it can no longer be a recommended pick from us. Microsoft then came out and said, "Uh, hold the phone, Consumer Reports. Yeah, we'll admit when it first came out, we had some issues, but as of late, they've been really good and we think you're wrong. And it's just a survey and people aren't accurate on surveys and that's baloney. Then... The other day, Paul Therat, who is a, a fantastic Windows reporter, obtained an internal memo from Microsoft about the reliability of the Surface devices, uh, and admittedly, they were not spectacular. Um, they, uh, According to this, that return rates for the Surface Book hit 17% during launch and remained above 10% for six months. Surface Pro 4 reached 16% during launch, and Surface Pro 3 launched with an 11% return rate. Um, the Surface Book has suffered from consistently higher return rates than any other Surface products throughout the two years it has been on sale. Now, the numbers have gotten better as time gone on, but at launch, they really were pretty bad. Now, they credit those issues to um, software issues and driver issues. Apparently, Microsoft wrote a lot of custom drivers for Surface that they weren't using on other Windows machines. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it caused a lot of blue screens and driver crashes and the display app, a docking app not working properly. Um, Issues working with the Skylake chipsets from Intel as well. Um, There's a great little anecdote here that um, that it was reported that Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella met with Lenovo last year and quizzed them over how they were responding to Skylake problems. Um, Lenovo was confused. No one there was actually having any issues. It was only just Microsoft. (laughs) So... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's it's an issue. So, I don't know. Microsoft hmm. believes it has fixed these issues and that return rates have decreased over the past 12 months. Um, we'll see if Consumer Reports' next survey reflects that, but until then, Microsoft is going to have to deal with it. I see. And so, just to refresh my memory, the Surface Book is the one that like has a full like computer thing that is... But it's it detachable. To. Right, right. Yes. But not the Surface Surface Pro. Yep. The Pro you... is the one that has the, the the keyboard case thing. Yes, and then the new Surface Laptop, which is just a, a laptop. It's just a it laptop. It does not detach. <laughs> oh. It's so obvious. It's, <laughs> you know. <laughs> is it a Surface anymore at that point? Uh, you know, what, what truly is a Surface? I remember when Surface <laughs> I mean, were those it's, it's... big table computers back <laughs> in the day, so... <laughs> that that's true that's true i wonder if they ever any ended up selling any of those because because they came out with the surface hub if you remember which was like the giant 80 inch surfaces and then they kept Mm. delaying manufacturing them for like three years i don't know if they ever actually came out um not that i was gonna buy one but (laughs) i think this is kind of a i think this is kind of a bummer uh of a story mainly because as someone who uses windows a lot um when windows works well it's pretty great but when it Mm. doesn't work well it's the worst and and i have that especially in in our in my office we have terrible terrible problems with with all the windows computers um Mm. that i'm convinced are our driver based yeah the uh what was i gonna say i don't think that's a problem that's limited to windows like when things don't work when computers don't work well it's terrible my uh I've noticed recently that one in three times that I get to work and plug my my MacBook into my monitors there, it just crashes. Like, it freezes up and I have to, like, hold down the power button and shut shut it off and turn it back on again. Mm -hmm. It's it's really unfortunate. Yeah, drivers for displays especially are 
gnarly. Yeah. And the, the, the thing that kills it, like I – not to derail this Microsoft conversation and make it an Apple conversation. The thing that kills me is I never, ever had a problem with a display in the last, I don't know, four or five – six years because i've always been using the apple monitor and now i'm not anymore and nothing works went outside the ecosystem well i mean it didn't really have a choice because they stopped making them it's madness in our office our it department has instructed us that whenever we un so we have these like special dell docs that they you know, like, and then they got all the ports in the back. Mm-mm, whenever you, yeah. whenever you remove your computer from the dock and go to like connect it to a projector or use it elsewhere, before you go to put it back in the dock, you are to restart your computer. <laughs> because if you don't, bad things happen. Oh no! It's it's horrendous. The oh, Wi-Fi maybe. on my laptop just stops working for no reason. It's it's that's actually why I end up using my Mac most of the time. So. <laughs> Maybe that's maybe that's what I need to do. It's just just restart my computer when I get to work. Maybe that's what I'll do when I get home. I'll shut it down, and then like when I go to work in the morning, I'll turn it back on again. It'll be good. You shouldn't. Yeah, I think that would work. You know, and that's what kind of bums me out about this story is that you know I, I totally believe the computer sucked when they launched, but even according to these internal memos, I mean it has gotten a lot better. So it's really just mm. a question of is it a bad reputation or or, or what's really the what's really the problem? Right, right. I mean, the the driver stuff seems plausible enough to me. If they had to write new things, I I've never done that because I'm not mm, particularly hardcore. But uh, it sounds hard. <laughs> yes, we will leave that to the professionals for sure. Indeed, not us. Uh, all right, let's see what else we've got. To, how are we doing on time? We've got time for one more story. We've got uh, Disney's app spying on children. We've got Facebook TV, video games in the Olympics, Disney splitting up with Netflix, the new Swarm. Uh, what's what's grabbing you? Disney Netflix sounds sounds important. Well, it it could be if you're a fan of those things being together. Like two great tastes that taste great together. Disney and Netflix, the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup of streaming, has decided they are splitting up. Now, uh, Netflix and Disney agreed back in 2012 uh, on a big streaming deal, very expensive, to get um, a lot of Disney's programs on uh, and movies onto Netflix. Disney decided, you know what? We don't really need you. We're fucking Disney, uh, and we'll just do it ourselves. So screw off. So uh, they've terminated the agreement uh, between the company and that Disney will launch its own streaming service in 2019. Uh, now, Disney has gone ahead and become the majority owner in a company called BAM Tech. Now, this is a company most people haven't heard of, but you'd be surprised how much it impacts your life because BAM Tech, uh, they created uh, Major League Baseball's at-bat streaming service back in the day as part of Major League Baseball ever since. They now run the back end for NHL's streaming, for soccer's uh, streaming service. They, Who else do they do? Is, did, are they the ones that do HBO stuff too? They I, do. I, yes. I was gonna say I thought MLB and HBO were were run by the same company. Yep. PGA Golf, the, the WWE. Um, they've really turned into a giant in streaming. Uh, and Disney owned a chunk of them. They just put another billion dollars into the company to become a majority owner. A b- 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 uh, b- 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 billion. Seventy five percent ownership. Um, in the company. And that's going to power this. Uh, Disney is also launching uh, at sometime next year an ESPN uh, streaming service where you can pay for ESPN directly as well. Mm. So, Colby, I'll ask you this. Uh, bad idea for Netflix? Bad idea for Disney? Great idea all around? See, I... What would be on a Disney's... I guess they have, like, TV, like kids' TV and stuff, too, right? Well... Like the Disney Channel, is that still a thing, or is yeah, that a that a defunct? Well, no, it's definitely I, still a thing, and they produce like, a lot of content. Right. On the one hand, part of me thinks, well, like nobody's gonna pay for Disney streaming, but on the other hand, maybe I'm not gonna pay for Disney streaming, but like people with children, maybe that's a better deal than like. Netflix. Well, 
the question is, when you say... The, the problem with media, especially older archival media, is the ownership rights are just a nightmare. And that's why these streaming services mm. don't have a lot of older stuff. It's, it's so bad. If you're telling me the Disney streaming service owns every piece of what Disney owns... Because you have to remember, Disney isn't just, you know, things you assume with Disney, but it's Pixar. They own Pixar. They oh, own yeah. Lucasfilm. They oh. own Marvel. They mm. own a number of motion picture studios, Touchstone Pictures, Buena Vista, um, a, a, a lot of live action stuff that's been in the past that you don't associate with Disney, but they technically own it. Uh, it's it, it, They own a lot of content. Um, the question oh. is, can they get it all on the... Um, can they get on it all stream. on their streaming service? You know, are the rights tied up somewhere else? Um, you know, here's here's a list of their highest, some of their highest grossing live action films Disney owns: Armageddon, Pearl Harbor, Lincoln, Pretty Woman, The Help, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Good Morning Vietnam, Enemy of the State. I mean, they own just a, a ton of major movies. So if if you can truly get me a service that gives me every single thing Disney owns, then we're talking. If you're giving yeah. me like only new stuff like okay so the new marvel movies are there great and you know the the latest pixar things there okay but i think you have to have a pretty big library unless the price is really cheap i don't know yeah. I mean, what's what's the ideal price for something like that? you're talking 3.99 12.99 right well i mean i mean how much even if they like they can't be making like Eight ninety nine. You know how much is Netflix now, right? Like eight ninety nine a p- subscriber, right? So, so Disney must be getting like some fraction of that. Like, I don't, I don't know how that that those deals work. Like, maybe they just get a lump sum of cash and they're like, all right. Um, but the, uh, you know, the even even if they price it at, at five bucks a month or something, like. They'd still, I, I, I'd imagine they'd be making more money than they were making off giving it, to, giving their stuff to Netflix and, uh, like reselling, because there's no middleman. Well, and and also their their content isn't competing with other content, right? So, th- there's right. value in them making sure their stuff gets seen, not just in terms of the cost of the media, but if someone's going on Netflix they might see a Marvel thing or a Pixar thing if they if they own Disney service they're, they're definitely seeing those movies they're then buying the merchandise and going to the parks and there's value in in you know we just talking about Apple and their ecosystem if you're Disney you want people in the Disney ecosystem um, mm. because you're going to extract more cash out of them than being one small part of Netflix's strategy and let's be honest Netflix's current strategy is not on acquiring other people's content that is not their yeah. focus. They're yeah. never going to have their top banner advertising the new Disney thing. They're just not. Mm. It's going to be the new Netflix thing. That's true. That's true. You know, and I, if I remember correctly, and don't hold me to this, I believe the deal was $300 million for whatever they were getting for that. Yep. Is it a better investment for Netflix to be spending that $300 million on original content? Mm. Maybe. I, I, I think there's an argument to be made there. Because yeah. I, I think if it's original exclusive to Netflix, there's value in it for Netflix and for their subscribers. If it's the latest Marvel movie, I've already seen it in theaters. Or I can stream it off of Amazon Instant and pay a buck ninety nine to rent it. Or right. I you know, there's lots of other places. If it's whatever the latest Netflix thing, it's only on Netflix. That's true. I actually never considered that until just now that you can't watch Netflix content anyway except Netflix. The future is uh, ever as far, as far as we can tell ever. Right. And not like even HBO, like that stuff gets syndicated out. I mean, maybe, maybe I guess uh, like how long has there been original Netflix content for it? Like maybe they'll syndicate it out to other things later, but do they have any reason to? Maybe not. No. And that's, you know, we saw a, over the last two, three weeks, it maybe just seems like more of a tsunami than it really is. But we saw um, who's the walking dead creator guy. Kirkman, something like that. Uh, he announced he's leaving AMC and doing a deal with with Amazon streaming. Uh, we saw today Shonda Rhimes, who created Grey's Anatomy and Scandal, and big basically made ABC the six. You know, took them out of the gutter. She signed mm-hmm. an, a, a big deal with Netflix. We're seeing creators. We saw the Coen Brothers is doing a big project with Netflix. 
the, these big creators want off of TV and they want on the streaming services. And as long as there's the money to pay them, then I, I think we're, I just think there's such a trajectory of growth on these services. They don't need Disney. They, they, it's, it's sad. It's amazing to say that a couple of years ago, nobody, I remember when they did this deal back in 2012, Disney used to do their rights with stars, the, the stars movie channels. Mm. Um, and that's where you could watch a Disney and Netflix came in and outbid them. And everyone was like, Oh my God, Netflix is crazy. I can't believe they did this and stars. Flew. And, 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 you know, it's like, Oh my God, now that Netflix has Disney, they're going to blow everyone out of the water. Now they don't even fucking need Disney. They're bigger yeah. than that. You know, it's, I don't know. I, I think it's it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it is pretty crazy. Uh, a whole new thing. I still like. I don't. I don't think of Netflix as a content company, but they kind of are, in a way. Yeah. Uh, more so. I also. I haven't like really watched any new TV or TV at all recently because I don't have internet. Um, and I just like. I remember the last the last time I went on Netflix, I was overwhelmed by the no, the number of new Netflix things. Like there was a point in time where I anxiously awaited whatever next new Netflix uh, uh, like series or whatever would come out. Now I just like there's too many. I, I can't I can't keep up anymore. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I agree. I just I I, I just don't know how many more. So when I moved here. I, I priced it out. I said, I would love to go cord cutting streaming. And mm. I priced it out to get what I was interested in seeing, semi-equivalent to cable. It would have cost me more to do it streaming because they would, they would have buck 99, 499 to me to death with a mm. hundred different services versus just paying the damn cable company. And I just yep. wonder when we hit critical mass at, we just saw this past week, uh, CISO. I don't know if you remember CISO. Yeah, they're gone now, right? They're gone. They went three ninety nine a month for comedy from CISO. Um, not a huge audience, but the people who liked it really liked it. Um, yeah. And they just couldn't find an audience to sustain it. And I just wonder... I mean, I know Disney's different, obviously, but there's got to be a point where there's a critical mass with all of these individual... You know, talking about ESPN is another yeah. one where it's like, at what point is it just is enough is enough and people are going to have to start picking and choosing between them? Really, Netflix had a monopoly for a long time because who else were you paying but Netflix? Okay, I can throw $10 a month down on Netflix. That's not a big deal. Now there's so much competition. Yeah, right, right. I think, well, I stopped paying for Hulu. I stopped my Hulu subscription because I stopped. Well, the things that I was watching on Hulu just were not, like, weren't on right now. I, I feel like I might pick it up again at some point. Is Rick and Morty going to come back? When when's it coming back? I don't know. Uh, Whenever that's on Hulu again, I'll pro I'll probably watch that. Well, it's airing now. I don't know if it's up on Netflix next day or uh, Hulu next day. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think AdultSwim.com. You might be able to watch it. Oh well, maybe I'll just go watch it on the internet. Then. Um, I know it's, you know, that's a, there's your there's your startup idea for this episode. If someone needs to make a service where it has all your subscriptions and like a little on off toggle. And you just go in and it's like, all right, I'm done with Hulu for now. So I'm just going to toggle it off. And then they stop billing you. Yeah. And then in like three months, you're like, oh, shit, that show just came back. You just toggle it back on. Or you just put in all the shows that you want to watch. And it like subscribes you and unsubscribes you to Hulu, Netflix, whatever. As when your shows available. are available. Yeah. That's a good idea. Because uh, they're yeah. going to bankrupt it's me. Um, I'm sure they would. Whoever would shut that down real fast. <laughs> I'm honestly it'd probably be easier to just pirate the shows than it would be to do that. That that yeah, might be a little overkill. That's true. Um, that's true. But we'll look forward to that when that comes out. Uh, all right. Well, good. Well, gosh, that was a lot of great tech news that I'm glad we got through. But now we're gonna move on to the time of the show we call. Oh, you know what? Actually, before we do picks, I'm gonna I'm gonna tease my own thing which is our own thing, which is great, which is uh, if you like that little TV discussion, we covered that exact story on Coffee and Beer Radio on TV Thursday, uh, which is the Thursday segment we do all about television news and uh, things happening in the world television. My pick has to do with this. Maybe I'll segue into that. Um, but we cover stories like that and the CISO uh, closure and the Disney Netflix breakup. We do it uh, <laughs> Thursdays. 
actually weirdly weirdly enough now that i'm thinking about it the reason i knew that CISO was closing is because i listened to the coffee and beer tv thursday you learn things yeah you, you know it's it's educational wow. content Holy uh, moly. that we provide and you can get that every day monday through friday at anchor.fm slash coffee and beer or wherever you get your podcast just search coffee and beer radio uh, today we did Movie Monday, where we talked about the box office from last weekend and update everyone on our Movie League. Tomorrow is Tech Tuesday, where I'll recap some of the stuff we talked about tonight, but also news stories that may have... For some reason, Tuesday is always a busy day for tech news, which is ironic because mm. we do this on Monday. But I always have, there's always news stories we don't cover here uh, that you'll hear tomorrow, so you can check <laughs> that out there. And if you're interested in TV news, my pick uh, this week is Vulture, which is the sort of media news arm of New York Magazine. Uh, and it is a website dedicated to movies, TV, and music, and in the same way, I get most of the stories for this show from The Verge. They're like my default go-to, and then I go from there. Vulture is my default go-to for movies, TV, and music. They do really great stories. They aggregate from kind of every... You know how blogs do that, where they kind of steal from each other. They do a good job mm -hmm. of aggravating... Not aggravating. <laughs> aggravating. <laughs> aggravating everyone by aggregating. <laughs> Um, the shared news uh, from all the different sites. So um, it's very comprehensive. Follow them on Twitter, and that's where I get most of my headlines and news from for that show. Well written. They got great people there. Um, the stories tend, they do a good mix of long form and really short stuff. Um, it's wonderful. Vulture.com is the website. Uh, if you're interested in news and learning more, I would say it's a good place to, it's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Colby, what do you, what do you have the? Uh... I've got I've got some music. Is this, this the week. is this the k dollar sign ha? Huh? Yeah, I think she took the dollar sign out of her name. She's it's broke. Just an S now. Oh no! Yeah. We need to go uh, fund me. No, but but Kesha Kesha has a new album out. She's been in whatever like crazy like legal purgatory she's been in for for the last I don't know four years or something. It's been a while. Um, but she she has new music out and it's like it's pretty good and not not in the way that Kesha used to be good. It's like genuinely good music. Um, I I enjoyed Kesha before for different reasons. Uh, but yeah, so if you're looking for something new to listen to, her new new album is called The Rainbow and it is it is on Spotify uh, and on other things. It's interesting. She has some I guess. I uh, I don't know, I read something maybe it was like a review in the New York Times or something but she I guess her mom was a somewhat famous either country singer or country like songwriter so she did a bunch of collaborations with her mom she That's has a cool. uh, one of the songs is featuring like Dolly Parton which is kind of random and cool um, but yeah so it, I've enjoyed it so far so if you're looking looking for something to listen to Cool. Yeah, it's Rainbow yep. by uh, by Kesha. It's uh, available for purchase, I'm sure, or on your streaming service of choice. Indeed. Check that out. I I will try it. Um, I I I will. I can't do more <laughs> I don't than know that. If you, I don't know if you'll like it. I, honestly, <laughs> it's a stretch, but you know, I'll 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 give it a shot. That's. Oh my God. Uh, I know you don't like Roderick on the line, but they were. Uh, the so so I did something embarrassing while I was on vacation and I spent like a day and a half just listening to Roderick on the line which which was fun until I I like lost my mind um, but <laughs> one of the episodes they were talking about they got talking about karaoke and Roderick said that his karaoke song is Brandy and I thought, I mean, I, I can't help but think of you when when I when someone mentions the song Brandy, because uh, I had never heard of it before before I met you, Sean. So literally everyone who knows me reasonably well, every time <laughs> they hear that song, they call me, they text me <laughs> the next day. They tell me, Sean, Brandy was on the radio the other day. I thought of you It'd be like of all the songs on the planet for me to be permanently associated <laughs> with. It's Brandy by Looking Glass, which, by the way, did, fun fact. Looking Glass hated that song. Did it doesn't they? sound like any of their other music. They're not like much more hardcore, but they're a little more hardcore than that. It's kind of like, what is it? Oh, the Cardigans would love Fool. Remember that one? 
No. Uh, no. Love me, love me, say <laughs> that oh, you yeah, love. Oh yeah, yeah. They're like they're a hardcore like band, and they made that song like as a joke or a parody, <laughs> and it became really famous, and they Damn. hated it. It's kind of the same thing with Brandy. So. Um, anyways brandy fun fact there for you cool <laughs> well go check out kesha she's no looking glass but she'll have to do <laughs> very cool all right well we've got to stick a pin in it because we're done colby anything else for the folks at home mm, nope uh next week i feel like dan might be back so that would be great Thanks. we've got how many we got two more mondays left in august Summer is is coming to a close, but we're gonna we're gonna finish strong. Yes, sir. And there's there's rumors, and I I don't dare commit to anything that there might be some game nights being recorded this weekend. We'll see. We're gonna hope for the best. Um, <laughs> By the way, Sean, I'm going to Africa. <laughs> no, that's such a thing. That that would be that totally would be a thing. I, I'm yeah. just. Oh, Sean, I got invited to Antarctica for the weekend. Be like, that's not a thing. Stop that. I, I did uh, I did get my Dungeon Master's Guide and Monster Manual in the mail the other day. So All right. uh, start, started some brainstorming for whatever comes after Shaker Heights. Very cool. Well, I know they have to. Have you used the app? I, they, what? They were, they just, I, it might still be in late stage beta. They were very close to, but there was now like an, like the D and D people did like an official five E, um, companion app. That's supposed to be very good. I just haven't gotten around to trying it. It, it might still be in beta. I don't, cause they okay. did like three or four phases of the beta and then it was going to roll out, but I would look that up. It's like early reviews were like really positive. Cool. Uh, I feel like Dungeons and Dragons in particular is something that would really benefit from a companion app. Uh, and not even like, not something that would benefit from being being uh, like entirely encapsulated in an app. Like it wouldn't be more fun if it was just a computer game. I mean, there are games that are, that's already been done before. Um, but there's a lot of like bookkeeping that a computer could do way better than we do. Uh, I'm excited for that. That's human beings. Yeah. I'm excited for that D and D book. You talked me into buying on Kickstarter. Oh yeah. That looks so cool. That's going to be slick. Mm hmm. That'll be nice. But anyway, that's all we wrote for this episode. Be sure to go back next Monday. We do it live sometime between 10 and 11 p.m. East Coast time on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash don't panic show. We hope you join us there. If you can't, don't panic.io is our website. You can go there at any time and get the episode, the audio, the video, and of course the pics are all there on the nice website. And of course, subscribe the video at youtube.com slash don't panic show and the podcast wherever you get your podcast. We're there. So just search don't panic. Uh, and lastly, contact us at don't panic show on Twitter or don't panic show at gmail.com. That is it. On behalf of Colby, and I'll just say, Dan, uh, this is Sean thanking you for joining us. Hoping we'll see you next time for more tech news and good times here on Don't Panic.